It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. D converted me in here, and I have Tyler with me. Oh my god, Tyler. Uh, hey everybody. Back in the day when we were younger, stupider people, we're super wise and nothing we do now is wrong. Everything we do is absolutely makes sense and is right all the time. Tyler, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having me on. Now, um, I want to get the uh, the uh, the big issue out of the way. Uh, you know, you you are the twentieth version, so are you a clone? <laughs> <laughs> what well, happened to one through nineteen? I don't know. You killed them all or ate them. All. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like apparently there's twenty of us, so I'm just like twenty. Number twenty just right the, here. Just the, just the, okay. Uh, we're gonna find the symbolic symbolic nature of that and figure it out eventually. Okay, so you have a deconversion story. Of course, you have a channel, big channel, bigger than my channel. Yet you've humbled yourself to be on here. I don't know why, but we were friends or we knew each other. I don't know what we were. You're everyone's friend, so I guess you're my friend. Yeah, uh, like an everyone's default. friend. So. <laughs> yeah, because if, if, I could even make a syllogism. You're everyone's friend. I'm an everyone. Wait, I think I broke it. No, it's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, whatever. You uh, you talk uh, religion. You talk politics. You, you talk social. You talk all the things. You talk about kaiju. You talk about Everything and anything under the sun, whatever comes your way, whatever enters your mind, you talk about it, and you're extraordinarily interesting. I used to watch you like all the time. I don't know what happened. I blame Google Plus. That's probably how you disappeared from my radar. But now you're back in my radar, and I enjoy your content. Um, how did you, you know, let's, I want to talk about a little bit about your deconversion story because that's my main thing, um, like how you got started in YouTube and all that. Did you grow up uh, believing? What did you grow up believing? Was there a certain denomination of that and all that? Let's go over that. Okay, so to give you guys an idea of my conversion, like my deconversion story, is for my case, I grew up in the Catholic religion, mostly because the people in my family on my mom's side are primarily, you know, Catholics, particularly my grandmother, and so she kind of instilled this sort of Catholic values towards my mother. And her daughters, which is my aunts, and of course, it landed to me and my brother. And so ever since I was little, I always, you know, had to go to church on Sunday in the Catholic church. And I attended Sunday school. And I remember at some point during summer, like Sunday school, I had to memorize like a lot of, you know, prayers for like the different saints. Because in Catholicism, unlike the other denominations of Christianity, you not only just pray to God. But she also prayed to, you know, the saints like Mary. And so I would marry to, like, you know, memorize the Hail Marys and all that kind of stuff. Hail Mary, all, Mother of Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 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 And also, now, yeah, during that time period, I was, you know, participating in the Sunday school. And also, I also had, like, confirmation when I was, like, a teenager to just dedicate my life, you know, to the Catholic Church and more towards, like, you know, Christ. And also during that sort of time period, I also was an altar server. No, I was not raped. I was not raped, guys. I was not raped by anybody. So I was a teenager when I was an altar server. And the main reason why I wanted to be an altar server was because I'm not sure about other countries in the world, but at least here in the United States, you're required to do at least, you know, 36 hours of community service. And I thought, what's a better way to do community service? Than to be an altar boy. And also one of the doctrines within Catholicism is the idea that the cracker and of course, you know, the wine are like literal true. Like they're absolutely true. Like the Protestants think that uh, <laughs> that is, you know, figurative is symbolic, but for the faith that I grew up in, it was literal. And so it's like, you know, really interesting, you know, when I was looking at, you know, the father, you know, doing the whole entire thing to, you know, turn the cracker into, you know, the body mm. and of course the 
But yeah, trans like, transubstantiation, isn't it? Yes, that's the word. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. It's like there's like no difference when I saw it as far as I can remember. It. But well, yeah, I, I'm what sorry. What would be ahead. amazing for that is I always think, you know, there's a testable, actually a testable claim because it's like, well, if it turns, if it changes, then we could track that. When does it change? How does it change? And because we could, you know, it's like, well, if it's in your mouth, okay, we could x ray you or something while you're eating. We could do something that would see it change. And they go, well, <clears throat> it's a spiritual change. Oh, okay. So it's not actually changing physically, it's changing spiritually, right? Like they, they have some way to make it untestable. And it's like, yeah. Right, right, right. And so when I was an altar boy, what I had to do was that I had to carry the cross of like uh, Jesus Christ and I would just walk slowly onto the altar. And then, of course, I would just pass the Bible to um, the father. And then I would also just ring the bells like, you know, there's like a certain ceremony during the whole entire thing where you have to just ring the bells. And then also we would just, you know, serve the body and the bread to people. Now, what's interesting about this is that everybody just shares the exact cup for like both the body and also the blood. And so, of course, the father would actually, you know, you would just put your hands like this and the father would put the bread in your like in your hands and then you just eat it like that. Or sometimes like people just open their mouth and just put the bread inside like that. And I then for the wine, what is kind of funny for the wine is that <laughs> everybody like, you know, share, <laughs> shares the wine. <laughs> and so somebody was like to spit in the wine or just put the booger in the wine, you know, every, you know. I, I guess even for COVID, they had to really uh, <laughs> for that. What, what they, did they change that out? Do you, well, I guess you were way out of it when that hit. But I'm Yeah, sure. that was before COVID. Yeah, that I'm wondering how they uh, handled COVID at all. Like, what do they do? Did everyone wear plastic gloves or something? <laughs> yeah, this happened way, way before COVID. Yeah. So how uh, how long was it before you know when when did you start your deconversion and what what happened? What was the cat uh, you know first event that that caused you to start doubting or questioning or exploring or what have you? I think the thing that caused me to you know start to question things was probably like, you know, going onto YouTube, which kind of connects to, you know, me going onto YouTube. Because my initial channel, I did like movie reviews. I particularly talked about the kaiju or like the anime stuff. And then I remember quite fondly of watching these sort of, you know, debates between like, you know, the, the skeptics and also the creationists. And I never seen like, you know, people who call themselves like, you know, atheists or anything like that. Like it was like the first time that I was actually, you know, exposed to these sort of ideas. And so I would just see, like, the atheists, you know, make their points, and, of course, the theists making their points. And when I look at the debate, I mean, it made more sense to me, the atheist side, because, like, they use, like, the science for their argumentation. They seem to just use the logic for their argumentation. And, you know, when you look at the debates, and I'm just looking at the debates right now, a lot of the argumentations that I noticed back then and still today rely heavily on presupposition because more or less like when you try to investigate a claim it is not the right thing to presuppose a claim like in the field of science what you have to do is make predictions i predict x y and z let's test x y and z and then we can make a conclusion from that but it's like the complete opposite and so it seemed as though when i was just watching the like the whole entire debates for like christian versus atheist like the atheist side always tend to use science, always tend to use logic. And so there was like very, you know, little disagreements when I was like, you know, watching these sort of videos back then. Yeah. But another it, fact, the oh, Catholic wait. church doesn't really do the whole younger stuff. They're, they're very pro evolution and all that. Um, yeah. That's the thing because like, I don't think I ever questioned evolution or that I ever, you know, question like, you know, the Big Bang or any like I noticed like this is actually a problem with the fundamentalist sex for Protestants because I never heard of like the base about, you know, Noah's Ark or anything like that when I was growing up. There's like something that was like completely new. Like I didn't really think that people actually believed that Noah's Ark was actually real. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that that's kind of a seeing that on, on you know YouTube and all that. It's like, wait, what? People believe in what? Uh, yeah, and they're they're on your side, you know. Uh, yeah. The thing there... is, like, yeah, the thing is, for the Catholic Church, when I was growing up, we didn't take the Old Testament to be serious. We took it as like analogy or like myth or a story with some history sprinkled with it. And so we mostly concentrated on the New Testament. And so that's what I was raised with. And so when I saw that kind of stuff for the first time, like, what the hell is, like, why would people take this <laughs> seriously, you know? But uh, getting back to my story about the deconversion. So I decided, of course, I like after watching the videos that I would actually, you know, study more and more history about the Bible. And I came to the conclusion that, of course, the Bible, no matter it's like the Old or the New Testament, is to be trusted. Now, in Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, which, of course, you know, that's the claim it makes. But in my studies, what I figured out was that the word God in, like, Hebrew is actually Elohim, and the word Elohim refers to, like, more than different gods. And so what I discovered was that, of course, behind the whole entire passage was that the context behind it was not there was just one God that created the whole entire universe, but it was like multitude of different gods that created the universe for that creation myth for Genesis. And so you would have stuff like, you know, El, you would have Ashura, you would have, you know, Baal, and of course you have Yahweh. And then when I went to like more research about, you know, what exactly is this, you know, assembly of like, you know, the different, you know, gods, I learned that more or less Yahweh was like a volcano god and that he was like one of the many sons of like, you know, El and also Ashura. And that apparently, you know, it was actually, you know, a warrior god too. And that apparently, you know, there was also, you know, you guys probably talk about, you know, the verses in Leviticus. Now, what I learned was that in the past, that for that ancient cult, that many, you know, practicers of Yahweh would actually just sacrifice the whole entire, you know, the ghosts and the animals and stuff like that. And so it made like so much sense. Like, why would, you know, this sort of God would actually be a warrior God? Why would it be like so many different gods that, you know, <laughs> be for the Bible? And I also started to learn that more or less that a lot of the stories that we take for granted for the Bible comes directly, not necessarily, you know, borrowing, like, but like, you know, having influence from different stories that, you know, predates the Bible. Let's take, for example, like, you know, again, Genesis. The story that possibly may have influenced Genesis is the Aluma Leash, which more or less had the same sort of sequences as like, you know, Genesis. Or we could take at the look at the Noah's Ark story, because for Noah's Ark, it was like, you know, the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Epic of Adaharis. And so I was just questioning, you know, thinking to myself, well, geez, like, why, how is it like, you know, divinely aspired if it was like, you know, borrowing these sort of different stories and then like, what is this, all these sort of different gods? And so from that conclusion, I decided, yeah, this is not, you know, not for me. And that my current, my current position right now, as I speak right now, is that I have like, you know, absolutely no idea if there's a God or not. But I would say that I'm not really convinced about, you know, the existence of like these other gods as described in the Bible or like any other gods that came before it. Yeah. With that, when you lost that, uh, did, did, did you lose other beliefs like in the supernatural, broadly speaking, angels, heaven, afterlife, things like that? Uh, you know, for the Catholic Church, we had like you know the belief in hell the saints right yeah 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 basically like the belief in hell the belief in heaven and the belief in purgatory mm. and i don't think i ever really subscribed to the idea of hell mm. i think i subscribed to the idea of like you know heaven but um as far as losing like you know utter belief in the supernatural i don't think i ever you know believe in the supernatural prior to the deconversion besides the god because mm. I would say, like, I was skeptical about the ideas of, like, you know, ghosts and, you know, unicorns, like these other kind of supernatural yeah. things. Right. And so I don't think... Miracles like, and, and things like yeah. that. <laughs> you didn't yeah. take that stuff seriously. But what about yeah. an afterlife? What, do, do you still... Is there still room for that or did that kind of go out the window as well? 
I mean, my thoughts about the afterlife is that I have no idea. And I think that's the great part about it, is that at my current position, I can just say that I have no idea how things came to be. Because once you start to, you know, presuppose, you know, say that your idea is fact and you cannot really back it up, then I think it's like a very dishonest position. It's a personal belief. And so for me, I can't really say why or not there's an afterlife. So I, I don't really know for sure. What about like ESP or, you know, people, I I can read your mind and all, you know, stuff. I don't, like I don't buy that. None of that at all. Okay. Yeah. You know. Well, cause I mean, you know, the, now the label, let's talk a little bit about that. Atheist, agnostic, strong, weak, uh, you know, mediumly well done. What, you know, <laughs> uh, looks like they cooked you a bit longer. Atheist. I don't know, whatever, you know, of course you will. Uh, you, some people might, uh, remark on the fact that I don't I don't want to shock you, but you are black, I think. And so people <laughs> like go, oh, it's a black atheist, you know, because that's a big deal, you know, for some people. I don't yeah, care. The thing, is that, the thing is that most people in the African American community are Christian. Yeah. And yeah. so it it's very, really, deal, really, so, really, really yeah. weird to find a black atheist. Really weird. Like, oh, we found one. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, whatever, like, you know, the, so I don't know what, what, what label do you, uh, you know, use that's your own that you've adopted for you and what does it mean? I would probably say since I don't have any, you know, conviction in the God, I would probably just say, you know, de facto weak atheist because there, I mean, there are some atheists that say that there is like no God at all. And honestly, I don't, you know, agree with that assertion. I'm always open to the possibility given the evidence, but like as we established earlier, like most of the arguments that I heard so far are just based upon presuppositions. And so I would say that I'm open to the idea of, you know, a God existing, but based upon the argumentation, I'm not really convinced by the apologists. Yeah. Now, when we say evidence, a lot of times people will take that to mean all sorts of things. So what, when you're asking for evidence, what are you asking for? Because somebody might offer a personal experience or, you know, some story of, well, you know, I used to do drugs and crime, but then Christ came into my life and everything changed, you know, and, um, you know, things were terrible, but then, you know, the uh, or things were great until the fire nation attack. Then I became a Christian and everything was fine. <laughs> so what, what I had to flip that in there. Um, what? Yeah, I think, I think there's a difference between like the anecdotal evidence, you know, yeah. and trying to, you know, test something to see if it's objective. Because like with anecdotal evidence, yes, you can say that someone can have like, you know, particular visions of angels or like God or whatever. But I think that could be explained away by the science that we currently know, which is to say that depending on where you live and the circumstances in which you live, your, you know, visions could be influenced by their dominant religion. So if somebody was, you know, to, you know, live in some sort of Asian country, like, you know, China or like, you know, Japan, I guess more than likely they would be a Buddha, like Buddhist to be like in their vision. Or if you live in like, you know, India, it would be like a Hindu, like a Hindu god or whatever. And so I think just depending on where you live and what kind of influence the culture you live in, is probably you know an explanation on why some people have these type of visions of these particular gods because it's kind of reconfirming like the culture in which they live in yeah now there is an argument to be made the person will say well but i experience real life all the time and when i have this experience that i call god it's as real or maybe even feels more real than that so you're telling me to not trust my mind basically just for that one thing and that seems unfair like why is it that one thing that i'm not supposed to trust but i can trust that i'm experiencing reality now what are, what are your thoughts on on that my personal thoughts is that again like they're trying to assign like you know their own personal feelings and just attribute to god because when you really just analyze the argumentation for like theism what i notice is that they use God as a way to just explain away the unknowable. And so if we don't have some sort of current day explanation on why something, you know, happens, they use God as the explanation to fill in that gap. 
For example, let's take the Big Bang. Now we have like no idea what happened prior to the Big Bang. And so I think the most intellectual, honest position for everybody to take is to say like, I have no idea what happened prior to it, but this is what we currently know so far based upon the models. And so what they would do instead of, you know, trying to say, I don't know, they make that assertion that God is the one that created everything. And again, also, you know, you can look at the mountains, for example, for the longest period of time, like people said that it was actually, you know, God that created the mountains. Then it switched from the mountains to the sky and from the sky to the universe. And so whenever there's like a lacking of like information that we currently know, I think people just use God as a way to just fill in that gap for things that we don't know. But like I said earlier, I think that the best way to know about information is to not to know pre-assume God, but rather just say, I don't know, and, you know, just go with that and just try to investigate the claims of, like, how things can be and so on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I I, I agree. Of course, uh, you know, empirical evidence, repeatable test, uh, valid yeah. and sound argument, those are my – any one of those three would, would do it, of course. Now, I don't think that you can have a valid and sound argument without – empirical evidence or a repeatable test but it might be possible for all i know so i separate those into three categories and say give me any one of these and i'll believe and um typically you know they try for the argument and the argument usually is uh, not 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 valid or not sound or both or what have you and uh, i just go no 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 mm -hmm. that, no 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 yeah, anything that begins to exist, stop. No, stop. No, everything that begins. I want to get. Exist, I want to get back. Know? I want to get back to my deep conversion story a little bit because yeah, yeah, was, go ahead. Yeah, no, there, go like ahead. there was like one aspect that I forgot to mention about. Mm. Of course, everybody knows about the stigma for atheists across the country, and of course, especially like in the Bible Belt, where everybody's like you know Christian, and so there's always going to be that kind of stigma, in which you know if you were to be out an atheist you're going to, you know, get some sort of pushback. So when I came out as an atheist to my mother, like she called me like a Satan worshiper. And she also threatened to kick me out after I just said I was an atheist. And so that was like, you know, like really painful because someone close to you, like your mother, is like someone that you really, really care about. And it really hurted me for a long time that someone would accuse me of, you know, being a Satan worshiper because I have a different view than them. And so for the longest time, it, like, it took like a long time to regain my mother's trust when I came out. And right now we're in good terms. But for the longest time, when I first came out, it was like a very scary place to, you know, come out. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wanted to go over that more because, you know, some people have that where their families or friends will disown them because they're no longer religious or lo no longer part of the religion that they were part of. Um, and that's just wrong. You know, it's just, it's like, no, you got to love them. But the Bible's yeah, the thing, like, yeah, yeah love thing, God yeah. more than everyone else. So it's like, well, you know. But Yeah, the thing is, like, if I were to have a kid, for example, who happens to be religious, I would not kick them out just because they're religious. I will still love them regardless if they're religious or not. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's hard to it's 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 hard to understand or comprehend how somebody could choose God over, you know, a, a member of their own family, somebody that, that, that they've taken care of and, and loved. Uh yet people people do that, you know, they, they feel obligated or, or to do that or they feel afraid. Uh uh I think it's a lot of fear, you know, that that it's like you're you're not you're not my son, you know, you're somebody else. You used to be this, and now you're this. Oh dear, you know. It's easier to say that you're a Satan worshiper than to believe that you just don't believe anymore. How could you not believe? It also in kind of demonstrates like the ignorance about, you know, the definitions, like we said earlier, and how we define atheists. Because some people think, you know, atheist Satan worship, but that's like the opposite of you know what it means. And so I would think, you know, if people really want to know about, you know, the actual definition of the word, just talk to, you know, atheists like you or me or anyone else watching this live stream. Because when you want to have conversation with somebody like me, it's really important to listen to, you know, the definition that's being explained, 
before you start to argue your position against somebody else. Yeah. Uh, when I, when I asked my mom, uh, you know, how she felt about me not believing, she said, well, I guess my only thing would be, I'm, uh, afraid or sad that you don't have hope anymore. And I'm like, and I responded really, uh, angrily to that i said not like you asked but i, I do have hope you know just not yeah you know, the thing is like, just really like a hurt, lot of, yeah, yeah like a lot of people have this sort of confusion that somehow atheism would just lead to like nihilism yeah. i mean while it's, while it's true like you know some atheists are nihilists not all atheists are nihilists like for my case i reject the whole entire idea of nihilism and i'm like the same sort of person when i was religious and so I'm not, you know, changing. I'm still happy-go-lucky. Do you guys watching this video, this live stream, think that I'm some sort of analyst just looking at this face? Can you guys yeah. tell me? That? <laughs> you know? Yeah, nothing matters. Well, but but we're all gonna die, and the universe is gonna experience heat death. So therefore, nothing really ultimately matters. And I'm like, I, I, what? <laughs> I'm like, but if you have an infinite life. After this life, then how could you possibly say that anything here matters? Because you're gonna, you're gonna just keep going and going and going. So it's the same either way. You can look at it you, you, either way and say that it doesn't ultimately matter. Um, you know. Yeah, the thing is, like a lot of stuff that's in my life right now is largely <laughs> motivation by the care of my people. And I would care, like you know, about my mother, the well-being of my mother, my brothers, my family my friends, and I would say, like, you know, those kind of experiences where, you know, experience, like, joy and happiness, sadness, you know, forgiveness, they make, you know, life have, like, a lot of, you know, significance. And so I would say that my life is largely based upon what my personal goals are, my love for my family, my love for my friends. And so it's, like, the complete opposite of, like, you know, nihilism. And it's also kind of sad to me how, you know, many people say, well, if you're an atheist, you don't have morality, which is crazy to me when I heard about that claim for the first time. Yeah, it's that you don't have a grounding for morals, you know, and uh, this comes from divine command theory ethics, that, that the only ethical system essentially is DCT, and all the other ethical systems don't count. There's plenty of ethical systems to choose from. And they're all, all those ethical systems are grounding of morality. Um, of course, not a lot of people know what their ethical system is or, or you know, get that deep into it, I don't think. So uh, usually the moral conversation happens without the ethical thing involved. And that mystifies me. I'm like, how can you talk about one without the other? I don't, I don't get that. You know, I, I subscribe to utilitarian ethics and people are like, oh, yeah, 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 I can get you on that. It's like, yeah, you can, because it's not a perfect system. You know, I have nuances of it that, that don't align perfectly with how it's written out and all that. And, you know, so your ethical system is DCT. That's what it is. And it's like they don't even know that a lot of times. Like, What's your basis? And the one guy I talked to is like, in the Bible, it's like, so that's DCT. It's like, I guess, you know, it's like, yeah, there you go. I so, mean, I don't think people should just get their morality from the Bible at all, to be quite yeah. honest. Like, I think, you know, we should know, like, everybody, including the Christians, should just acknowledge that the Bible's morality is like its own sort of time period. And mm -hmm. the fact that the Bible morality is, you know, completely different than our current day morality shows that, you know, morality is not just a standstill. That morality gradually over a period of time, as we know, become more advanced for humans, we start to change stuff in details. And so for me as a black person, when I listen to, you know, these sort of apologies, you know, making sort of justification for slavery, that is like so crazy. You're black? <laughs> what? <laughs> I got a black one. Everyone, I got a black note. <laughs> but yeah, like I I'm a white one. Ah, you know. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, like you know, I see these sort of like you know these sort of jumping jacks of like the slavery apology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't actually slavery because uh, what it was was indentured servitude. I'm like, how is that? What? That's 
It's not. It, oh, it's better. Okay, yeah. Is it though? I mean, like, well, it's different, but it's still wrong. Like, I don't care that it's different. Like, yes, yeah, fine, but it's still wrong, right? Like, oh, well, you know, it's like the same sort of argumentations that people used in the past for black people and for the country. Because mm. what they would say, well, you see. We're not really allowed to just, you know, kill somebody. We just hit them lightly. It's like the same sort of argumentation they were used to justify crimes against Black people. Yeah, and I think a lot of it earlier on was just dehumanitizing the other. Yeah. They're they're less than human or they're not human, fully human, or they'd have like half a vote or things like this. And it's just, you wonder how that happens, how how slavery happens, because slavery's happened of all, all colors and all races over time, you know, uh, you know, it's just, we're more aware of, I think the, the, you know, what happened with America than we are, you know, there, there have been, uh, blacks that owned white slaves and things like that. Yeah, the that, thing about, like the yeah. thing about it though, like, you know, when you were, when we refer to the Ten Commandments, yeah, like, none of the Ten Commandments ever, you know, condemned slavery in the slightest. And also when Jesus, you know, talk about the Ten Commandments and like the New Testament, he never condemned it at all either. No. And matter of fact, I believe it was Paul, he said that slaves are ought to obey their master. Right. And so, right. Like no part of the Bible, whether it's like the Old Testament or like, right. you know, the New Testament ever condemned slavery in the mm-hmm. slightest. Well, it's codified within the 613 commands that follow that, that slavery is how to deal with the slave is is codified into that uh i believe i could be wrong but there's well maybe that's separate but at any rate there's there's rules on how to can how to handle the slave and what to do and how to you know if they're a foreign person you can do this and that if they're not a foreign person you can do that and i'm like well what makes somebody foreign they're not from your place. Okay, well, then everybody, <laughs> whoever I want is the you know, it's like, and then they can offer their life to you and, and you can put a, you know, hole in their ear. And so you pierce their ear and, and it's like, yeah, but how do, how does anyone know that they, that you did that to them and they didn't want you to do that? Like, how would they, how would anyone know? They'd be like, oh, you can't change your mind. You got a, you got a piercing down. Like, no, he put it in there. I swear. I don't want to be a slave anymore. It's like, they put it in there. Uh, <laughs> come on, go back to work for him. You know, nobody's going to listen, right? And, they, and and so it's just terrible. But, you know, they 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 conquered people and they, they you know, used their war god to justify that conquering of people. And part of that was either we, if we don't wipe them out, then we enslave some of them. You know, and and we use them for labor. We use them to bear our children, whatever. You know, and and maybe we treat them a little bit better than we would than other people do because we're special. See, like, you know, like. No, getting back. Like, to like, yeah, you 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 guys, you you treat your slaves. You you kill your slave outright. See, we just hit them. But we don't. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we don't kill them. I mean. You know, <laughs> As long as you look, you can hit them, but you can't kill them. Look, okay, so they're, you know, you guys over there, you're not as good as us because when we hit them, we make sure not to kill them. Oh, okay. <laughs> and also getting back to the historicity <laughs> of like, you know, the Bible. Like I mentioned earlier about, you know, how the Old Testament was borrowing some stories from like different stories in ancient Mesopotamia. Now, for the whole entire New Testament, I find it to be really shoddy too. Because, like, if you read the book by Bart Ehrman, he is, like, a scholar for the New Testament. He wrote a book that was called Forge. And what we know so far is that half of the Gospels that, you know, are we know right now is on forgery. And also, of course, like, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was written at least 40 years after the fact of, you know, Jesus supposedly dying. But even then, like, the resurrection stories just tend to just contradict each other. Because one story is like a humongous earthquake. There was like Mary Magdalene and, of course, the other Mary. And then, of course, you know, they found Jesus, you know, rising up. Then the next story is like, you know, just Mary Magdalene and just her finding like the spirit of Jesus again. The other story is like Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus and some other guy. 
And of course, they found like the spirit. It's like the whole stories for the resurrections are very contradictory. And also, I remember reading the study that apparently, like, you know, Mark is, of course, like before the other gospels. But even then, like, most of the gospels are just copies upon copies. Like, they have, like, you know, no sort of original copies of the text out there. And so, like, anything could just easily be, like, politically manipulated or something like that. And also, like, take, for example, like, you know, prior to the text being written down, like, it was uh, used through, like, oral tradition. And so sometimes through, like, oral tradition, like, the message, you know, could be, like, you know, completely manipulated, too. Let's take, for example, like, you know, Game of Thrones. There was this one scene where the guy was like, you know, say, hold the door, 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 you know? <laughs> and so it could be like that. Like, it could be like the whole entire scene for, like, Game of Thrones, but for Jesus. But instead of, like, you know, Jesus, like, like it could be, like, something, like, different in comparison to that. So we have no idea, like, you know, what Jesus actually said or did. And now people point out, too, you know, like, you know, Josephus. And from what I understand so far, like, Josephus was a forgery. And so it's not necessarily his writing. And so right now, my position on Jesus is that maybe he might be a guy, maybe, but like, you know, he's not, you know, like the son of God, but like the evidence so far outside the Bible is pretty shoddy. Yeah. And we go to like, say, Islam, you know, with Muhammad, you know, he, this person, you know, is literate himself or, or at least claims to be. And mm -hmm. so he has the book written for him. Or he writes some of it. It depends who you ask. He writes some of it himself, but with the uh, uh, help of God. I don't really know how at all, you know, what the mythology is. And then there's another book on top of that. It's sort of like the, I'm thinking like the, the Catholics, they have the, was it the Pentateuch? I think. I it, think, no, no, no. It was like know. the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. Apocrypha. That's it. Right, 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 right. And so. The Catholic Bible is more fleshed out than the than the Protestant. Yeah, it's Bible. it's kind of funny how that works. Like for the Protestants, it's like sixty six books, yeah. but for the Catholics, it's like seventy like two books because yeah. of the Apocrypha. So it's so like, the thing is, like the, the whole entire idea of having like different books, <laughs> like the whole entire idea of just having like different books for like the different religions is you know evidence like you know it's not really divinely inspired because more or less it tells me. That not even among the Christians they could actually agree. Yeah, I mean it's amazing. Yeah, what is not Christian? You know, God, God talked to Muhammad to tell him the other gods that are down there, those are the fake gods. I'm the real god. Muhammad's like, okay, I'm gonna go tell them that their gods are fake. Hey guys, your gods are fake. I have the real god. Yeah, right. Let's chase you out of here. Okay, and then somehow that became a religion, like that he had the real god and the other gods were fake. Uh, probably he conquered those other people, you know. That's pretty, pretty much, yeah. It's kind of funny how it works out, like, you know, how yeah. you know, my god is better than your yeah, god, yeah. One, one guy, like, and it's like one guy or a couple guys or a couple gals get told, my it's god. like, you know, the whole entire my god is it's like yeah, better than yeah. your god is like a dick measuring content, yeah, it's always, really. It's like, always my dick is better than your dick, your dick is better it, than it, my, it's like, yeah, it's, like, it's always amazing <laughs> that it. And it's always amazing how God communicates to only like one person where nobody else can see or hear it, right? Like yeah, you have yeah. the story, you know, he goes up into the mountain because that's where God is. He goes up and talks to God, comes down. He's like, This is what God said. And they're like, Uh-huh, sure. Whatever. <laughs> Why not? Sure. He went up the mountain. You want to go up the mountain? Nah. Believe him. He, he, why would he lie? You know, so I mean, <laughs> then yeah, God had to move out of the mountains because people could go up to the mountain. So, pe so God moved into the clouds, and then you know, we went into the sky and we're like, well, you know, and okay, God has to move above that. We went to the moon, so God has to move, you know, somewhere else. Now he's outside of space time because why not? You know, it's like okay, but every religion has their person or persons that were inspired by talked to by god or a heavenly body you know something uh of course there's you know buddha is a little bit different and and tao taoism is a little bit different but broadly speaking you know that the god seems to appear in such a way that humanity cannot get the same message from god every single time 
which is really odd that God would do this. And I don't know what God was doing uh, when he talked to the Hindus. I think God went on some psychedelic. <laughs> some of them were like elephants now. And I don't know what's going on there. But you know, God was tripping some some serious stuff when he was with the Hindus, I guess. You know, that was his uh, hippie phase or something. But that's yeah. the only way to make sense of God if you're like, trying to say that there is an actual being that interacted with humanity is like it revealed itself here and here and here and here and every time it was like what it had a different mood or was like high here was drunk over there you know it was really mad during that time it was really like laid back you know you know it's like god or maybe it was a different god every time you know and, and some gods are jealous like make me the god i'm the you know the other gods i don't like them you know yeah, so that would be the only way. To... Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting how, you know, all these sort of gods that man created throughout history are mm. just more or less personifications of people and how they feel. And so if somebody was like bigoted, their god is bigoted. Mm -hmm. If someone's kind, their god is kind and mm -hmm. vice versa. And so right. when, I re when you really think about it, like a lot of the gods that people created throughout history I would say are just, you know, personifications of how they feel and what they do and what they think. And so I feel as though, like, the whole idea that there's, like, different gods and people choosing which one, again, you know, depends, again, largely on where they live and the circumstances that they're in. And, like, a lot of it, like, like I said earlier, it's, like, again, their own personal thoughts, some sort of special pleading on what God is, like, the best one for me or not, depending on what the person is. Um, one question I get asked every now and again is, okay, so let's say God did whatever it needed to do to prove itself to you. Let's say it's, of course, it's usually Christians, but that I get, but you know, I go, okay, so it's Jesus, Je whatever it needed to do. Jesus is God. Would you worship that God? Would you join the religion now that you know, it's true? You know, like I said earlier, I was doing research on biblical history and knowing what I do right now, I would say absolutely no. Because more or less, like, I would say the God of the Bible, like the Yahweh character, is probably like the most disgusting kind of God there is. It really loves, like, the animal sacrifice and the genocide and killing the unborn. Like, it's probably like the most bloodlusty God I could possibly imagine. But, like, if it, even if that God was, like, you know, real hypothetically, I still would not worship it. I would just probably just give it the finger first before I worship it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and then the, the usually the rejoinder to that sort of answer is, well, see, there you go. That's why God won't give you the evidence. <laughs> you wouldn't join it anyway. So, ha ha. That's why God's not giving you the evidence because you won't you won't love him anyway. So there you go. And it's like, well, that was a lot of circular insanity to get to that conclusion. And, but I'm like, look, I'm honest. You know, I would say if I had proof, I would go around and I would share that proof. I probably wouldn't join unless God turned out to be nice. Then yeah, I would, the thing, you know, thing, but I don't know. Thing, yeah, the thing I don't is, know what God's like. Cause he, <laughs> right the thing is also like even if like you know i take for granted that there was a historical jesus mm. it doesn't mean he's god right i right. mean like you know like i could be friend. a really nice guy you know maybe he was an alien i don't know you know maybe he was yeah. a wolverine you know i mean he had regenerative powers he was the first x-men you know i don't know <laughs> why not you know it's more plausible it's more plausible that his genetics were such that he could take a beating and and basically die but bounce back from it and that's just how yeah i think it's work. like you know in the in the gospels it mentioned about the guards but that was like one of the gospels and most of the gospels didn't mention the guards yeah so my personal theory about the body for jesus maybe it's entirely possible that some person you know just took the body and just ran off with it yeah. another possibility that i think so far and i think a, like apologia made a video about this is the idea that they put the body in a mass grave. And because right now we have no sort of Roman records about what they did with Jesus' body. And so it might make more sense that they would probably put the body in a mass grave than, you know, having him, you know, resurrect from the dead. 
All right, Yin Yang wants to know, how do we respond to a Christian that says, God always does the most wise and loving thing under the circumstances? Well, that's like a really hard question. Like, um, let's take, for example, Noah's Ark. Now, of course, prior to, like, after Noah's Ark, what happened was that um, he mentioned the Ten Commandments that thou should not kill. And, of course, like, he ended up killing, like, the people in Noah's Ark, but whatever. Anyway, I would think if God is, like, you know, all-wise and all-knowing, he would not, you know, try to, you know, genocide the whole entire population, both the women and the men, the children, the unborn. I always think if God was all-powerful, he could just snap his finger and, of course, just change the heart of men without having to resort to genocide. Yeah, there's all uh, like the most white thing, like the most wise thing. Yeah, you know? like just teleport them away. Do I mean it's just so many different possible solutions that you have to the problem that 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 are just left out of it. It's like, well, but you don't understand it's God, so God has some reason that you can't figure out to do it. And I'm like, uh no, I can figure out like 20 different ways that I would do it that are way better. It's like, no, God had a reason to do it. God had a reason to do it in this bizarre, stupid way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like when people bring up like intelligent design, I'm like, yeah, no, it wasn't very intelligent. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, they knew stuff, sure, but they were kind of dumb. I mean, the way they decided to make everything, I'm like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> You call that intelligent? Like, oh, yes, your body is blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, well, here's this person with two heads. What about that? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, person born without a brain. What about that? Well, you know, that's because of sin. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. You know. um, there's a, you know, this one person that's a conjoined uh, twin where her sister's head is fused into her head. So they, 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 or, or and there's another one where their heads are separate. Uh, and like one head's here and one head is kind of here, and they share the same body, and they have some of their organs are doubled up, uh, and they've had to have them removed to survive. Uh, but it's like you're dating one, you're dating the other, and, and but they both have their separate identities and licenses and all this. And I'm like, what if one was a theist and one was an atheist? Which one goes to heaven? How does that work? <laughs> yeah, the thing about it, though, like you know. If God is all knowing and he could just know if someone's going to be an atheist later on in life, like, wouldn't it be not, of course, be more, you know, good for the people who are not, who are atheists to not be born and, you know, make them suffer and go to hell? Yeah. Or what if, yeah. Or, <laughs> well, you're not going to, yeah. And of course, some people say, well, you just, there's no hell, but you'll just not get the reward. And I'm like, well, what's the point in that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, like, at least tell me, hey, you were wrong or something. Let me know. I mean, come on. It's just, it is, it is just, it is, well, make believe in a way. It is, it is, we invented this to explain reality. I think science does a much better job under, of, of explaining reality, even though it's like, well, that's weird. Like, oh, here's what an atom looks like. And it's like, okay. It's like the shirt that you always look at. Yeah, that. Don't forget about that. That's not how it looks. I'm like, oh, well, but, but that's how, but no, it's like this. It's like, we don't know where the electron is. It's somewhere in this orbit. And, and I'm like, oh, okay. That's okay. Cool. That's all right. That's how that works. What, how, what, you know, it's like, and these <laughs> things work like this. And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel dumb, but I'm also getting knowledge. It's like, I can learn anything because it's not going to change. It's not going to hurt my beliefs. Uh, uh, my beliefs will change. You'll accept it. And uh, yeah, the thing that as, an, uh, as, as a non-believer, you can like learn anything, and it doesn't hurt you. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, when I was a Catholic, of course, like we always kind of accepted the science. And so when I left the faith, like it didn't really affect my, you know, thoughts about the science. But like I feel still that it's kind of sad that there are so many fundamental sects out there for Christianity that teaches that Noah's Ark is real, that the whole entire book of Genesis is true. 
And so I think, you know, the best way to just, you know, besides telling the scientific evidence for like, you know, how this is impossible, is also to have some sort of humility, like some sort of humility for like the conversation. And I think that, of course, um, people need to know the attention of the authors and also learn about the biblical humanics and just learn the context of the story, study the history, and then you can make your own personal analysis for it. Because just looking at the stuff and just taking it at face value, it's not the best way to go. So just question like everything in the Bible, page by page, do your own analysis, your own research, and come up with your own personal conclusion. Then, you know, to say this is completely literal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I had the guy before here, before I talked to you, it was actually, I talked to myself. It was really interesting. Uh, I talked to him <laughs> the deconverted man versus deconverted man. It was great. I don't think I said deconverted man enough during that stream. I, I'm pretty sure. But <laughs> yeah, he had similar, you know, experiences to you with, you know, deconversion, kind of just thinking his way out of it. And one thing he said that I've heard is I read the Bible and it's like, Oh yeah, I read the Bible. That didn't deconvert me. Well, I read, <laughs> I read some. I read most. Like, um, okay, I didn't read the whole Bible. Like, uh, <clears throat> you know, I read some of the. I read, you know, got to the who begot who part. I skipped that because <laughs> <laughs> that was boring. And that's the other thing. Like, it's so boring. What well, when when the book inspired by god or written by god it's never written by god which is weird wouldn't the book that god helped write or did write wouldn't it be like the most amazing book in the world like it'd be like oh yes this is you know here's how you know quantum physics works and it'd be like it would explain it perfectly and it would be not only interesting but it would also be like a me it would like you wouldn't be able to put it down because it was so alluring and, and well written and you know there'd be great drawings and you know but that's not how any of the holy books work and they're all just kind of like dull they're boring it's like this is boring yeah, the, the thing is like you know there are like very select stories in the bible that i do like i yeah, remember yeah. like when i was a kid when i was a kid like my favorite story of all time in the bible was actually uh, noah and the giant whale when I was yeah. a kid, I also Jonah. watched like yeah, yeah like when I yeah. was a kid, I also watched this program that was called Veggie Tales, and so <laughs> when I when I saw like they were gonna do like a Noah like you know, like Jonah and the Giant Whale, like I just could not wait to see that movie. It's like oh my god, we're gonna see a real life <laughs> Jonah and the Giant Whale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... But but like I said, like like you were saying, like I don't think even like the Bible, if you were to just read from the Bible directly towards kids. I don't think it's that really appropriate either. No. It's, no. It's, it's, no. And then take joy in bashing their heads against the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember that. I remember, uh, I can't remember the show's name now, but there was like, oh no, Superbook. That's what it was. And they had all the, the, the biblical stories, but that's it. They focus on the nice stories. They don't. You know, wait a second. Hold on, I'm gonna show you my my Bible when I was a kid. Yeah, Hold yeah, on. yeah. Go ahead. Go. All right, he's gone. Let's talk about him now. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is my Bible from when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they actually do cherry pick the nice stories. Yeah, and just put it like in a child's Bible. So yeah, so it, it, you know, tell them you know the nice you know the Noah's Ark, all the animal, the giraffes, the two giraffes are poking their heads up, they're smiling, yeah. right? You know, and they're all shilled, and they're like, "Yay, we survived the flood." You don't see dead bodies floating around, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so uh, let's uh, majorly shift some gears. Now we're gonna lose all the viewers, I'm sure. Uh, current events, because you're into that sort of stuff, and uh, I'm a skeptic, but I go, well, I try to use logic, but I, I can't use logic on politics. I cannot, it, it's like, it refuses to make any sense at all. Uh, what's going on? If we lost our minds, if the world lost its mind, we had COVID, we still have COVID, I guess, but now 
we we're over it. We're like, whatever. We don't care anymore. Screw it. Whoever dies, dies. I guess because we're yeah, tired of it. You know, politics, like, like right <laughs> now. Yeah, the thing about politics right now is like it's a complete shit show. Honestly, because <laughs> everything that happens in the world, you know, it's just it's just going down. Yeah, it's kind of like taking the front seats to the burning of Rome. <laughs> because like what's happening right now is like you're like really is this really going on is this what yeah. people are complaining about yeah it was funny bernie or uh what's his face uh biden said uh new world order and i'm like <laughs> well you idiot why did you say that i don't you know that all the conspiracy and so twitter was like uh this uh made all these conspiracy theorist people go nuts but it's not really real i'm like yeah twitter good Let's add more fuel to the fire. It's not really real. <laughs> Brilliant. You've made them believe it's really real now by saying it's not really real. Let's put a thing on YouTube that says everything's fine. That's a good idea. That won't make anyone suspicious about things going on. Morons. You know, you know it's going to you know, kind of connect to skepticism. Because in a sense, like when you're reading the news... You cannot just take everything at face value. Mm. Like I know for a fact that like a lot of people, they just read the headlines for the article, but they don't read the whole entire article. Yeah. And so don't just look at the headlines, read the whole entire article before making judgment. And even when you read the article, like with the Bible or the holy books, fact check everything. Fact check everything. Just don't take it at face value. Just because, like, the news station says so. Because as time has shown many, many times, news stations are not trustworthy. So try to find independent sources. Yeah, they're, they're, they're out to make a buck. So there's going to be some bias, you know, and they, they're, they're either left or they're right or whatever. And, and so I listen to both because it's like, well, you know, I don't know. It's somewhere the truth, somewhere in the middle. All right. I know is it appears to be madness. Like, Canada is going on there. And it's like, what are you guys why is the leader doing this it doesn't make any sense where they're codifying into law these ideas that have come from ideologies about race and racism and it's very creepy because and you know peterson's talked about it others have talked about it as well and i looked at it and i'm like it's it's everything is covered like if you're black you're safe you're this you're that you're that but Caucasian is not there. So you have to, like, is that deliberate? Because, you know, I mean, it seems like you got, it's like, is it assumed that Caucasians are protected enough? So we're not going to mention them? I think it, the idea you know, of that's like, come, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, the idea of that seems to come directly from like intersectionality. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. The idea of intersectionality just came directly from the 1970s. From a person named Kimberly Kremstron. And more or less, like it has this sort of playing field where, like, the people are, like, you know, oppressed the most. Like, you know, for example, the blacks or, like, you know, anyone else that's lower than the white man, they're, like, the most oppressed. And of course, the white man is, happens to be an oppressor. And, yeah. you know, the thing about religion, of course, for Christianity, is the idea of original sin. Mm. And so when I see people, just start to blame everything on the white man. That to me is like no different than the concept of original sin because mm. you, you cannot necessarily just hate somebody just because of their race. I would assume that most people in the world would just judge people largely not because of their physical characteristics, but by the content of their character. And yeah. so when I see stuff like that, it's kind of divisive to me because mm. I think that we could do much better than that. Yeah, it's, it's scary because they're taking the anti-racism idea and it becomes racism because you're focused solely on the appearance of people and you're looking for racism everywhere. You're going to find it because that's what you're if your job is to find racism. Well, then how are you going to keep your job? You have to. It's, find it's it. exactly like, it's exactly like the pre presupposition for like mm -hmm. God, for example, like, of course, the believers presuppose God as the explanation of how everything came to be. Well, if you presuppose racism, you're going to lose that sort of nuance. Yeah. And so what they have right now, instead of like the God, the gaps, to me, is the racism, the gaps. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, 
Yeah, because it's easy, you know, and then everybody's called racist this and everybody's yeah. called Nazi. And, and then these words no longer mean they lose all coherence and meaning because you, you're using them to gain power. You're, and you're not you're not actually addressing the problem. And this has been talked about by more philosophical minded people than myself. But one thing was like, OK, we will hire black people and that will fix the problem because we're not being racist anymore i'm like well it can't <laughs> um yeah uh, you're being racist just in a different way it's like well no because we're, we're 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 fixing the past because in the past people wouldn't hire black people so now we're only hiring black people and i'm like well, why don't we just make all the white people slaves let's just do that for like a while and then that will fix it, right? Like, we'll be slaves for however many years the black people were slaves, right? We'll just have all the white people be that, and then we'll all be even, right? Yeah, the thing about is that, that what you yeah. want. And, and I think some people, like, they want everything to be nice and even. I'm like, the past, like, that, we were done, that, we were, we, I'm not responsible for that. That wasn't me. I wasn't there. You know, right now in this, you know, me moving forward, like, I'm not this way towards that person. Oh, you know, yes, you are. Because you said you weren't. You are. I'm like, yeah. No. And <laughs> they have codified into part of this for the Canadian law. I read uh, I read the law or the proposal for the law. I'm not sure now. But your actions or thoughts will be looked at. That It's like, wait a minute. Um. You can't look. You, I, I, the action part, sure. My thoughts, you can't. <laughs> know, you cannot know what I'm thinking. And so, if it's inequality happens, if, if if something happens, it's because I was racist or whoever was racist. That's why the bad thing, whatever the bad thing was, happened. And I'm like, this was like when. Okay, we're losing jobs. It must be the Mexicans. Like you know, that was a. Th and it's like, oh. All the people crossing the border, that's why there's less jobs. Well, there's less jobs, but nobody would have taken those jobs anyways. So, no, there's not less jobs in a sense. Yes and no. Because, right? like, do you want to go kill chickens? No? Okay, well, somebody has to do that, you know. And so there's a job here that, it, uh, near, not nearby, but there's a job here where we can go kill, kill chickens. And they make good money. And it's like, well, but we can pay the foreigners less money. Well, yeah, because they're not here legally. You can pay them whatever, and they'll have to take it because it's something. You know, it's better than nothing. You can pay them a penny, they'll take it. Um, yeah, in comparison to, like, you know, other countries, we have a better living wage for the minimum wage. Yeah. Because I heard that, you know, for a lot of American countries, what happens is that they're actually not paid by the hour, but by, like, the whole entire, like, you know, week. And so it's like really, really low money, like, you know, $2 like a day. It's like really low. Yeah. And so when it comes to, you know, the United States, you know, starting to get the jobs, of course, even though it's not our like, you know, minimal wage, when we start to pay them lower, then of course they feel like, you know, it's actually better than what they had back home. Yeah. That's crazy. But, but, but I think that racism is becoming the new scapegoat. Guys, I was trying to say, it's like, we used yeah. to blame the Mexicans or the foreigners or whatever for the problem, whatever that problem was, real or imagined. And now it seems that the more uh, it's been called progressive. I don't know if that's that seems to be the term everyone's using. You know, I would say progressive, like, you yeah. know, in quotation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. In quotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not enough quotes in the universe, right? Like, because I don't know what the label is. You know, that's like that's become the label, whether or not it is it's appropriate because. Again, there's nuance, you know, and and right. you know, and and at the end of the day, it's in Canada. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it, other than just be like, "Well, that's interesting." Okay. You know, there was a <laughs> yeah. book. You know, there was like a book that was written like you know two years ago after the death of George Floyd. It was called "How to Be Anti-Racist." I'm not sure if you read that book, but when I was reading that book for my channel and it was reviewed uh. the book. It was like the you know most racist crap I ever read. Yeah. Now, yeah. So, now, what, so yeah, what happened in the book is that they were trying to say that, of course, all white people just need to just feel guilty, and of course, 
white people need to pay for like the reparations or you know and of course like i remember reading at some point that uh, mr candy has stated that he wants some sort of department of anti-racism for like the u.s constitution or whatever and so when i look at stuff like that like it's kind of sad to me because in the past like you know in the civil rights movement what happened was that people like martin luther king fought for like the civil rights for everybody that to me Right. Was like a true anti-racism. Yes, yes. but that, now that, it seems still that the word for yeah. anti-racist <laughs> has been co-opted. Yeah, like, that, you know, that noble, that nobleness, and I think yeah. Morgan Morgan Freeman spoke on this a bit. Yeah. That it's like, no, I don't want you celebrating Black History Month. Celebrate me because I'm accomplished. And it's like, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. And it's like, no, that doesn't work because other people can't do that. It's like, no, you can do it. That's the wrong, that's the mentality that's stopping you is believing that no, you can't. Yes, you can do it. You just have to choose to do it. And yeah, it's gonna be hard. It, no one said it was gonna. Be, yeah, and and so you have things like well, it's like well, let's give grants only to X group of people, or there will be grants for everybody, but then there will be extra grants for. X, Y, and that's Z not category. equality. That's literally yeah. not equality. Like if you're you know. treating someone differently because of their race, that's well, a complete yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, there's the United was it the United Negro College Fund, right? And that's been that's existed for a long, long, long time. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's earlier in my life, I'm like, well, that's good, because you know, they need that. And now I'm like, well, that's bad. They they don't because they do they need I don't know anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to think about it because my brain's been broken with all this, you know, stuff that people talk about. I go, how about we just have like the funds that are, you know, anyone can apply. I, what was wrong with that? I don't, I don't know. But... I think like a lot of this stuff also, you know, has to do with, you know, the amplification of social media because in the past when I was growing up, like social media was not a humongous thing. Yeah. Yeah, that changed and a so, lot. So like when you see like the negative news, like it's a constant cycle, like mm -hmm. not just in a news station, but also on social media. And of course, people nowadays are just using their cell phones. And so more people becoming more and more antisocial. And so I always think that because of the fluctuation of bad news, it mm -hmm. just gives people the wrong impression about what's going on. And because all of it is like really an illusion. Because I think right now in this current year, I mean, let's just forget about COVID for one second. Like in the current <laughs> year, in the current year, we're living way better in comparison right. to like the ancestors that had to deal with like a lot of crap. Well, we're even with COVID, period. you know, even with that fear, yeah. uh, and I think a lot of people did look at that and were just scared out of their mind. I was worried. But I was like, you know, whatever. It's either I'm going to die or not. Whatever. There's nothing has changed for me, really. That seems like the life, you know. And right. I don't know that we reacted to it in a way that made sense. I don't have any, but I don't know a better way that we could have. But that's, again, it's kind of like if I was in charge, I would know what to do kind of idea. And it's like, I yeah, the no, thing about no. it, like, people need to, you know, like, for, people, for politicians, like, to be in charge, like, they are. Yeah. It's like, you they know, know I can't do it myself either. So, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. You know, I, I would be honest. I'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing. So, I'm just going to get people that do know what they're doing in here. Let's get the experts in. Like, I would want to rate, maybe like, do it like uh, the movie Idiocracy, where the smartest person on the planet, that's who's in charge. Let's do that. Let's just do that. Why not? Like, oh, you, everyone takes this test after, like, I don't know, 12th grade or whatever. And it's like, whoever scores the highest, that's who's in charge. And they they don't get a say. They have to be in charge. You're, that's your job now. It's like, I don't want to do it. Too bad. You're, you're smart. You're yeah. Smart. And also one thing, that's, <laughs> you know, one thing that's also, like, really crazy to me is that not even our media is, like, you know, free from politics. No, like the movies no. nowadays, like have some sort of political message. Yeah, the yeah, movies and, and, course, there, right, <laughs> and the video right, games right. have the political message. Like everything of entertainment has some sort of political message. Yeah, yeah, it feels like, like that. Yeah, yeah, like it's I, I said, I said how because we were talking about woke and all that that word woke, yeah. whatever that means. Um, and and it was like it because we were talking about Star Trek Picard, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, it's not woke because you can tell when something is woke, the writing sucks. 
That's when it's woke. Okay, like you go the go the female Ghostbusters that was woke. How do we know? Because the writing sucked. That's how you know. Like yeah, <laughs> like because they're like, let's have women do this thing, but let's write it as crappily as can be, and then we'll pretend like it's fine because and that everyone that says anything bad about it is just saying that because they're women. No, you wrote some crap. And then you're you're using the fact that it's women to defend your crap. That's still crap. I don't care who was in it. It it was just bad. You wrote something bad. Yeah, the thing about like you know, rep- <laughs> yeah, the thing about representation for me yeah. is that like I believe <laughs> that representation is not a bad thing. Uh, but I no, think no. That, I, no. But the thing is, like the thing is though, like there's a clear, clear difference to me between like you know organic representation right. and just you know forced representation. Yeah. Like Othello, Othello would be great to have to see that like in a movie, to see Othello movie format because I, you know, it's been a play for a long time, uh, and somebody could do it right. You know, I'm not sure. Maybe um, what's the guy's name that did Get Out? Appeal. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he could do it. Okay, I don't know, but but you just do that. You know, you and that's it. And you just the character drives the story and then you go, okay, well, we want representation, whatever that means to you. Then you go, okay. Then you find the story for that. You don't go, well, we're just going to re- have the same story. Like they do. They're, people are complaining with the uh, Lord of the Rings. I don't really care about Lord of the Rings, but they're like, well, like, the new Lord of the Rings series has all the, all, you know, black elves and purple munchkins and whatever else. They yeah. I don't know, I don't know. And people are like, yeah, they're gay. And they're, <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not how that world works. <laughs> but, okay, whatever. I can't stop you from. I don't care. Is it good? Is the show good? That's all that matters to me. It's not going to be good because you know I'm just predicting it's it's going to be woke. And that's it's, I'm calling. You yeah, the, the thing is, that, yeah. like a lot of like a lot of these yeah, shows and movies, like, just like they just tend to just you know. Focus yeah, more token, yeah. tokenism like, because they could just replace like yeah. a pre-established character and then just make them like black or like a woman. Yeah, like I remember any... at some point they were going to do the same for James Bond. They're going to replace like James yeah, Bond with, with a woman. He was going to be a black woman. Well, she, yeah, she had the t- the last James Bond movie I think had a. I didn't watch it because I don't. I stopped watching the original James Bond movies. Those were good enough for me, and I didn't like the newer ones. But whatever, you know. Uh, right. And even those, I don't even like that much. It's just kind of like you watch it because it's, it, you know, it's a thing to watch, right? Um, but yeah, they had another character called 007 who was a black woman. And it's like, okay, why? why <laughs> 008 or 00 whatever. I mean, why? Because, okay, all right. Mm. You know, and, and it's like, you know, I, I don't I don't understand that's like have it be their own character because that that that's more interesting. Yeah, One. and also it kind yeah. of just feels <laughs> it feels very lazy too because to me, like when you write a character, if it has to be a minority, the story must be original, yeah. the well, character they- must be original. And so I think the best way to have representation is not to just, you know, replace the pre-established characters. Make your own character film your own movie yeah. and have that kind of representation. Yeah. There, there, yeah. And, and there's all sorts of ideas out there. I mean, there's millions, you know, I mean, you know, get some, you know, people let people co- write in and come up with some ideas or whatever. I mean, you know, why not? I'm okay with like, if they want to do like an alternate universe, Superman that, that, that happens to be black or whatever. I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. But it's an alternate universe. And you have to right. say that because, Superman's been white. Well, you know, they have one where he was raised in Russia, like Red Sun, I was like called. So call it Black Sun, whatever. I don't know. What <laughs> the hood Superman. I don't know, but I'm like, well, they already did that. It's called it's it was a what was no, no, it? no 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 call him or, like call him like the solar eclipse or whatever. The solar <laughs> eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dark knight. You take the <laughs> you're a black guy, black Batman. No, it's black man, you know, so whatever. I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, man, I've gotten myself canceled now. Uh <laughs> But yeah, like Avatar, the movie, uh, uh, the or well, the last Airbender. 
like that was a complete well it was a crap that that one call that one woke that one was just broken but uh-huh. they missed out there's your opportunity you could have had inuits real eskimo people you could have had this you could have had that no that you just like what did you do what? Yeah. You, you so that could be redone and they were talking about doing like netflix live action version of avatar using people I'm like get people that look like the anime characters please Get the real, you'll find someone that can act that looks right for the part. Don't put a white guy as Aang because he's not white. He is pale, but that's different than being. Yeah, it's the same thing with like the Egyptians, for like the older movies. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, he's a monk. The same thing, like, they yeah. don't get like the actual. He's an Egyptian. Asian monk. Like, yeah. Right, yeah. So find someone that looks like him. I don't know. That's an idea. <laughs> There you go. And then people can be like, yay! And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But it, it I don't know. We're not going to fix it. It doesn't matter. It's madness. I don't know what to do with it. I can't make logical sense of it. That's all I know. And whenever I talk about it, people like, go, oh, you suck. And I'm like, well, yeah. Ah. Uh, but I have I have a black friend, so I can't be racist now. So that's <laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> well, yes, I can still be racist. I don't know what it means to be, like, couldn't, and that's the other thing, like, you can be racist in one moment, but you're not, that doesn't define you for the rest of your, it shouldn't define you for the rest of your life. Like, it's like you said something bad to somebody and the thing that you said bad was also racist and that's bad. Okay. I don't know that it makes it greater bad. Like, okay, I could call someone a poopy head. That's pretty bad. I could call them a shit head. That's, ru- that's worse. I could call them the beep, beep, beep. Oh, that's racist on top. So that's worse. Like, no, they're all, it's all bad. Okay. Let's not rank, you know, like the, the S tier ranking. <laughs> You know, we could maybe you could do that. I don't think I could get away with it. Yeah, the thing the- is, like, a lot of people on social media, <laughs> when they make like these sort of tweets that are kind of edgy, like, yeah, they, it goes back to bite them in the butt. Yeah, and honestly, like you were saying earlier, I agree. Like, you know, people are not the same forever, and right, so their right. personal viewpoints about a certain group of people change like over a period of time. Yeah, and so I don't think, of course, like trying to just shut them down, right, is a good thing. I remember, like, there was this controversy for, like, uh, Dave Chappelle because, yeah. like, did some sort of special and it was, like, making fun of, like, you know, transgender people. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, yes, like, everybody's, like, the target for joke. I mean, granted, you may not like the joke, but, like, yeah. anything is not off the table for jokes because they're just jokes. Yeah. He he, he made a point during that because I watched yeah. that special. He made this long story that wasn't funny or humorous explaining his friendship to this person before he led up to the event and he said you know my friend she went up to the roof and jumped off and I kept thinking man it takes balls to do that and that they would have loved that joke because you know they 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 were born a man uh, biologically a man but you know they're, they're trans woman or whatever I guess they really did kill themselves which is very tragic uh, and you know something something went wrong in in their head to get them to that place because we accept that I I accept you whoever you are for as you are flaws and all whatever differences I don't know the language thing. I don't understand it. I've I've tried in the past to try to make better sense of the language thing because uh, yeah, the thing about yeah, the, that, that's like, the thing, like the pronouns. Like the thing about the pronouns for me, yeah, is like that. you know, like, like for example, I don't mind using she, her, or him, like he, he, him, whatever. Yeah, but when it goes down to like the Tumblr stuff, like yeah, no. zim, zipperty, doo dah, they, they, yeah, whatever. It's like yeah, no, I'm not whatever. Gonna... <laughs> I I mean, okay, that's your thing. I don't know. I don't get it. But yeah. I think it's a phase. I think people will get past that. Possibly. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, but yeah, th- the thing is, like, when you get offended, like, people get offended or they get offended on others' behalf. And I was like, yeah, you know what? It's a bit amazing. I'm going to tell everybody something amazing. When you get upset, the world continues to spin. It's, it's just, like, nobody cares that you're upset. So, so, you know, let's just not. Let's just not. 
like you know, like Rogan. There's like a direct quotation yeah. from like Christopher Hinchon. He's he said the exact same thing. Like he said, so <laughs> fucking white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like Roseanne gets fired from her show because she says this thing that's racist yeah. or whatever, and it's like she didn't even know it was racist, but that doesn't matter. And it's like, <laughs> like, dude, that no, it has nothing to do. Like, just and I'm like, look. Delete Twitter. That's and it. also, I want to delete so Twitter. Far, and also, delete wanna... Twitter. Just delete Twitter. That'll save you a lot of headache. <laughs> and also, like for those watching this live stream, I want to first emphasize that it's not just something from the left either. It's also the right too, because oh the yeah, right yeah, yeah, It's also as bad. Let's make fun of them too. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I'm gonna make fun of them. Let's make fun of them right now. Ben Shapiro, so. like he, yeah. It, <laughs> well, he's probably the 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 least uh, annoying right, if you could, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, I'll listen to him, and it's like, he has some ideas, I agree with some ideas, I don't. But uh, he's like, my his personal view on what's right, according to the Bible, regarding, like, gay marriage, is like, no, but that's, if you're in our religion, that's when it matters. If you're not in our religion, it's, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, like, Ben Shapiro says, like, facts care, don't care about your feelings, but then, when it comes out of God... But when it comes yeah. to God, then it absolutely, yeah, right. <laughs> He does at least separate. He'll say, like, what I believe theologically is gays shouldn't be together, but socially, you know. I want the government to stay out of it. And I'm like, okay, I can agree with that because you don't want, you just want the government to, to leave it alone. And that seems, that's the same outcome I want. I want the government to leave us all alone, you know? <laughs> be there when we need you, whenever that is, but otherwise not, I, I, you know, leave us alone. There was this bill that was done in Oklahoma that's it's going to be, I guess, passed. I'm not sure it's going to be passed right now. But uh, more or less it said that in Oklahoma, that students have, like, religious freedom to, you know, sue the teachers. So anything that goes contrary to the beliefs of the students they could actually sue it. For example, yeah. as somebody, you know, was teaching evolution and there was like a creationist in classroom, they could just sue the yeah, scientists see, for that, teaching evolution. That, that, see, that's not going to go well. Now, of course, yeah. the, Satan, the, the, the church of Satan will hope will get, will get a hold of that and it will be, yeah. it'll be, it'll be fun because, well, everything you teach is against my religion. That's it. <laughs> Well, what do you? What's your religion? Lobsterism. Yeah. What, what are the teachings of lobsterism? Everything that you teach is against my religion. <laughs> That's what it says right here. See, it's in the. I added it to the book later, but it's there. You know. Yeah. There you go. Now what? And you're like, well, you owe, you owe me a million dollars. That's it. You know. How do I get? You know. I mean, because that's what you will see. Because that's too far the other way. We want the state to stay out of religion stuff because you can't represent every religion and non-religion it's impossible to do you allow that to the town square you're like okay we'll have the cross up okay we'll have the star of david up all right we're gonna have the statue of medusa up, and the statue of satan up and the naked statue of venus and you know, and then you know, you've got my lobster guy out there, you know, and he's like, you know, he's going, you know, I'm like uh, my my god is really big, so I need him to be bigger than everyone else's, you know. And, okay, you know, and then it, the, the thing is crowded, you know, it's just ridiculous. So it's like, no, how about just no to all of it? You know, we're not gonna yeah, teach the thing your about kid like that, the like the thing about the Satan is is like yeah. some people like they think that they actually worship Satan, but they no, not they really, don't. No, they don't really they, do that. Yeah, that's like <laughs> uh, there is no maybe there's a devil worshippers, but it's not this the, the, the church of uh the satanic church is not that uh yeah. but they, they use that political leverage that they have as an established religion to go in and say, Okay, you guys wanna say this in Ohio, well guess what? We're gonna have you sue everything because we're going to just say everything is against our religion and we're just, we'll just add it in because we can and you can't tell us that we can't so we got to keep religion stuff out of the government that's clear i mean texas did that with well we want our sheriff cars to say in god we trust because it says that on the bill and i'm like no no no, and also maybe we should get it off the dollar bill. But then again, maybe yeah, like, it's like yeah. it's like a whole this whole entire stuff about like you know the separation of church and state. Yeah. Like yeah, more important. or less, like people don't people claim 
that the United States is a Christian nation, but if they look at the freaking documentations that were done by the founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson, they will know that he actually argue against, of course, like the mixture of church and state. And also, like, you know, when it comes down to stuff like, you know, and God we trust in our money, I think, of course, like not many people know this, but like, you know, during the Red Scare, of course, many people, you know, were afraid of communists and call like every single thing just communist. And so, wait a second, one second, my, that's my cat. Give me one moment. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, he's got he's to go eat his cat now. All right, what else do you want me to talk about in the chat? Let me know. We will bring it up. Tyler will discuss it because he okay, can talk about anything. All right, great. I was telling everybody to, uh, to uh, suggest ideas because we will talk about whatever we don't you know i don't care anymore whatever i you know i'm i'm immune uh, <laughs> uh, uh all right let's read the comments right here so yeah, yeah, the, yeah. how could the how could the <laughs> church states and basically atheists worship being from a god they don't believe in well right, exactly i think the whole entire thing is like they see that satan is like you know a symbolic symbol of you know rebellion or whatever if i'm not mistaken yeah and so they actually you know see him as you know as a symbol rather than something that's literal yeah yeah um i like the what was it that he said oh where was it the opposite of principle and charity of socratic method twitter yeah <laughs> yeah yeah delete twitter just delete it just get rid of it get rid of facebook too you'll be much happier Believe me, I did, and I'm, pretty, I'm way better without it. Uh, it was, it's just, it's not a good place, you know, and if you're always, you got to take a break, and you got to look at the good news. Like, there's a couple websites out there that focus on the good news, and go seek those out and engage in that. You know, it's like, what new discovery has been made in science or whatever, because it's like, yeah, you need that. You need that in your life, and you. I wish we celebrated volunteers and, and things like that more often. And it seems like you rarely, rarely hear about that. So it's like local heroes donated however much to whatever charity, something like this. Like you need that. And and I don't know why we got away from doing that. You know, that somebody earns the key to the the town or the city or whatever because they did this wonderful thing. And that makes more people want to do that wonderful thing. And maybe in a way, we could say, well, the blame can maybe fall on religion because it says, don't do that. It says, keep your thing in secret, right? Well, but I think that's part of it. I also think that they saw that bad news sells and they didn't They didn't see good news sells. They haven't tried it. So we don't know if good news sells or not. Maybe it sells better, but nobody's tried it, right? Yeah, like every single time I just look at the news, it's like, Killing, shooting, repeat. Killing, shooting, repeat, repeat. War, war, war. And so, like, I was think, you know, people should just turn off the news sometimes and just yeah. walk outside. Just don't be surrounded by that. Yeah, there, there's like a website, there. yeah, goodnewsnetwork.org that's like, here's all the positive stuff. Like, okay, yeah. yeah. I was like, more of that, please. I want to see that on you know, not that i watch tv but it would be good to have something like that on network tv but again i'm not in charge of such things okay tyler we've talked about everything we've talked about race we've talked about religion what things have we not uh possibly offended somebody about that we haven't talked about yet or should we just end it now before we're both completely no, no, let's end it now before we get canceled <laughs> all right <laughs> probably a good idea there's more we're gonna talk about the Edward, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 don't go there, take it for that. No, but it came into my head. It's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about that. No, let's end the broadcast now. No, wait, no, more ideas that are bad are coming into my brain. <laughs> When you said the thing in the Catholic Church, they were like, they ate the cracker, and my eyes went like, Bing! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's wrong. Okay, anyways, thanks for watching and not unsubscribing to me, I hope. <laughs>
I saw my fault. I can't, you know. Me, I'm, I'm, uh, maybe it is my fault. Something's wrong with me. I don't know. Tyler, thank you so much for joining me on this very serious thing. You have your wonderful channel. People should go check it out and 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 uh, engage in your content. Right now, you're reacting to the Bible which is an interesting kind of way to go about it. Yeah, it's the like, thing about it, though, is uh, I decided that we'll do a series of videos where I just read, like, a chapter or story of the Bible and then provide historical context to it yeah. and my personal critical analysis to it. Because I think not enough people, even the Christians, read the Bible. No, oh, yeah, yeah. So, or the, the, what you're saying about El and El Shadim and Yahweh and Asherah, who was God's well, Yahweh's wife, but written completely out of the Bible, I think. All that is like, you don't, you have to dig deep for that. And so seeing and hearing about that would certainly be something up my alley uh, if you did that, or I don't know if you've covered that already. Uh, I did it already for the first episode. Like for like atheists read the Bible, like the creation of the universe. Mm -hmm. I talked about like the various gods in this live stream. And I also talked about the Aluma Leash. And now for like my next chapter, which is like the uh, Tower of Babel, I'm going to talk about the historical Tower of Babel, but it's not for like, you know, Yahweh, it was like for the Murdoch God. So mm -hmm. like it replaced the God with a different God for the Bible. Right. And so like every chapter, I'll try to provide like historical information that I know so far and mm -hmm. just do my critical analysis that way. Yeah. Because I mean, that's something I think that even if you are a believer in that thing, that there's value there. So why wouldn't you want to know everything that you could know about, about that? I mean, yeah. it, it says, let us create man in our image. And yet and it's like, well, people go, that's the Trinity. No, no. The Trinity is, is a concept that the, the Christians came yeah, up with. Really, what, what it really, even, it, yeah. Like what it really says, it's not like in the beginning, God created the heaven. Or it's like in the beginning, the gods, Mm, yeah. yeah so it's changed and yeah it's important yeah. to to go over all that and why you know why the bible changed well because religion is about tradition it's not about exploring the the facts of the matter yeah. and it would be much better if it instead of saying god every time it said l and yahweh or whatever it would be much easier to understand what's going on because which God, yeah, let's like, take like take one for of the example, gods I mean, loves the uh, smelling the the smoke of dead animals or whatever. Which God is yeah? That? Well, well, let's take for example, like for like the concept of hell, like with Jesus mm. Christ. He yeah, that was his, right? of, yeah. But like the thing about the word that was for the Greek, right? It was like Gehenna. Now, mm -hmm. when I looked at the word Gehenna, what I found out was that they did like you know some sort of like you know garbage can whatever burning garbage in that place. And also, like, a lot of people who were kids that were sacrificed there. So that's also really crazy to learn about when I was deconverted. Hmm. Yeah. 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 And it's also interesting that when somebody deconverts, yeah. they tend to learn and understand more about the Bible than the believer does. Because they're not, you know, they're told the superficial stuff. They're not told the real stuff. So hopefully, yeah, definitely engage with uh, Tyler there. Gage, I don't know what the bleep that means. That's how <laughs> you know just, what I mean. Just like check out Tyler. Just check yeah, out Tyler. yeah, yeah. Get married to Tyler on his channel. I, I don't know anything anymore. Like his stuff, uh, and all that. And leave your comments in the comments below what question I should have asked, or what topic I should have covered, or how wrong was I in general. That's fine, whatever. Uh, that's it. We're gonna press the button now. I'll leave you with the last. Let's. I'll ask you the impossible to answer question of what would you want to say to people that would hear this a hundred years from now? Well, I want to say if people hear this like a hundred years from now, to do your own research, just check the facts, do your own personal self analysis, and of course, just make sure to not take everything at face value. Now, here are some books that I recommend people to study the Bible. So give me one moment to get the books for people to study. So hold on. Okay. All right. We're going to do that. I'm going to drink, drink. Mm. That's some good root beer right there. That's what I'm drinking. All right. I'm feeling so, better. So the first book I recommend... 
to study the Bible for those listening to this 100 years from now. <laughs> and those listening today. <laughs> it is like the stories of ancient Canaanites. Like you would know like the gods that are, you know, hidden in the Bible by like reading this book. I highly recommend this book. I also recommend the book that is called A History of God. That's like where I learned about like, you know, the Yahweh character and how the books were formatted. So I recommend this book. And of course, this other book that's like the history of the early history of God, I also recommend this book. So yeah, do your own research. All right. I, I like that. Thank you so much, Tyler. This has been a lot of fun. Hopefully we can do it again. Uh, if you want me to be on your channel for some bizarre reason, let me know or whatever. And we'll, we'll do a thing or we won't. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, everybody. Until then. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, okay. So here we go. We've got one snide comment here. There you go. So th there's your question. <clears throat> <laughs> when did you yeah. ever test the speed of light? <laughs> I mean, is that a trick question? <laughs> no, I, 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 well, he's saying do your own research, but you haven't done that, so you don't really know the speed of light then because you have <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, fair enough. Not sure what that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, other uh, like, okay, so you do your own research is still a good idea, even if Tyler hasn't researched everything that there is to. Research yeah, the thing is, though, like, like if you when you do your research, make sure there's always citation, like a bibliography, to know where you could like search the information. And yeah. so if somebody wanted to know about the speed of light, they could, they could go to the paper and look for the citation and the testing and whatnot. Yeah. So Now, if you wanted to test the speed of light, I, I don't even know how I would set about it. So I'd have to learn how to, how to construct something that would do that. And so that would be then my research to do that. If I indeed wanted to know the speed of light for myself, rather than rely on what science has already said on the matter, I don't, but it's a good methodology to follow if you really wanted to go extreme in that route and not be charitable by what you meant by do your own research. Okay, I there's like one more final question I'm going to answer and then we can. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the last question I'm going to answer is, when did you learn like Greek, Hebrew, Hebrew, and Aramaic? I don't know these languages. Mm -hmm. The only languages that I know is like English, and I speak Spanish with my girlfriend. That's the only languages I know. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Tyler. And uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. A little bit of a down. We got to end with an up. We can't end with a down. Uh, what was the thing that I said last time that was really stupid that I shouldn't end on? Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. We were going to uncover the secrets of reality. Yes. And I believe the equation that you had 